Good evening, and welcome to Night Gallery. Thank you, Rod. And I want to welcome everyone to Midnight Viewing, where once a month we talk all about your follow-up to The Twilight Zone, Rod Serling's Night Gallery. They say it's Rod Serling's Night Gallery, and it isn't really Rod Serling's Night Gallery, it's somebody else's. Oh, we know. We talk about it a lot. Your curators at Midnight Viewing are the projection booth's Mike White. What can happen to human beings when trust is wiped out by suspicion? And Culture Cast's Chris Stashu. Small boy encased in a crystal ball. And I'm Father Malone. The kind of thing that usually infests nightmares. Join us monthly at Midnight Viewing, the Night Gallery podcast at WeirdingWayMedia.com. It doesn't remotely belong to me. I have no proprietary interest in that at all. Chris Stashu. I'm Mike White. And this is Father Malone. And we are the hosts of Dreams for Sale, a once a month look at the Twilight Zone from 1985, which was That's good. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it, it, it was good. Most, at one point. It's a mostly great series. Is it unfortunate that this show has some really good episodes and some really bad ones, or is that just anthologies? That's anthologies all the way. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we've said this before, but go back and watch the entire run of the original Twilight Zone. As great a series as it was, there are some dogs. Yep. Speaking of dogs, these episodes may or may not be dogs. We'll see here in about five minutes. We're going to be talking about the 12th and 13th episodes of the third season, 2020 Vision, and There Was an Old Woman. Focus on Warren Cribbins, a myopic little man, precise with figures, awkward with people. His horizons, a bottom line dotted with decimal points. But his safety in numbers is about to be erased. So 2020 Vision aired December 10th, 1988. It is directed by Jim Purdy and written by Robert Walton Walden. It stars Michael Moriarty as Warren Cribbins, a nervous little man who works at the bank, processing loans, and his glasses break. And then he can see things. Maybe the future, maybe an alternate universe. Who knows? All I know is this episode was just okay. Yeah. Continuing the the genteel tour of the Twilight Zone. Uh, just kind of stories that are mostly heartwarming at this point. Like without very much uh, Twilight zone kind of twists. Like, you know, and I don't need a twist in a show, but... I, I need it to have some sort of not necessarily a reason behind the the, the paranormal or supernatural thing occurring, but like it, it, they're just so toothless this season. Like that, you know, it, right? it's You're toothless or bad. There's not yeah, an in between. Like, toothless yeah. To, and yeah, and no point of view other than like what we're seeing. Like you know, I mean, look, there have been Twilight Zone. There was a Twilight Zone episode where the guy flips the coin and it lands and then he can hear it lands. Yes. He, he Penny for your like, thoughts. Right. Which is what this one reminded me of, except it reminded me that that episode was awesome. And uh, this one is just slight at, uh-huh. at best, which is a shame because, you know, Michael Moriarty is one of those guys like he must be a real dick to work with because he just didn't seem to get further than television. <laughs> Well, him and Larry Cohen got along really well, but yeah, there, there aren't too many people that did. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, look, if you go watch him on law and order when he was the, uh, the district attorney on that, oh, like, yeah, the, he is so good. Like I've never seen an actor embody decency in a way that Michael Moriarty does. He seems to be, if it's just an act, like even more props to him because he seems like a really decent human being. And that kind of comes across here as well. Um, I mean, I love him and everything he's in. It's just that, you know, as we've said on many episodes of the show, this episode just does him a disservice. It's it's so slight. It doesn't really give him anything to, like, latch on to other than this guy who seems decent from the beginning doing the decent thing at the end. Like the, the, the only quandary is like, you know, should I do this thing and lose my job? Like, I don't know. It's not like he's whatever, like, experience these glasses are giving him. Like it's only sort of reaffirming, 
like what he already knows. It's right. not like he's he's a miserly dickhead and then finally sees something from somebody else's point of view. It's just like, yeah, this is kind of shady what I'm engaged in. Oh, yeah, yeah, it really is shady. I mean, it was the mortgage industry, especially back here in the 80s. You know, this right. is way before the Frank Dodd Act. So, yeah, Dodd Frank Act. Sorry. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, you're right. There is no change. He, he wants the girl. He doesn't get the girl. I, I mean, what, what was up with that? Like, it's so obvious that they should be ending up together at yeah. the end of the episode. And he just walks out and it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. I guess I'll have to find another job after I loaned this hayseed, all this fucking money and it's like oh my god dude are you a fucking moron loaning all of your money to this dude who oh yeah 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 uh, i mean he's, I, not, he's I, not getting that money back no no he's going to die penniless and destitute he probably should have made at, steps in yeah he should have looked at his own <laughs> bank account with that uh with the glasses and it's so weird how he just like <laughs> uses the glasses so sparingly it's like man if i had those glasses i'd be wearing them all the time and checking out what the future brings what's well, like the power in the dead zone right like you would yeah. be touching everyone like come here that ice, cool. it's gonna break. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know. Like, come here. <laughs> let me tell you something. Five bucks, and I'll get, like. And no, it's just like, hold on, hold on. Let me just put these on now. Like, right, dude. Like, yeah. you have this power that you could use for good or bad or indeterminate gray area in between. And you're just like, hold on a second. Yeah, at least in the dead zone, like it's it's physically painful for him. Right, when he touches right. somebody like yeah. this. It's, there's no consequence whatsoever. Like, leave those glasses on. Find out everything you can. Yeah. And been I, given the sight is again, is it is he seeing the future or is he seeing a future possibility? That's I what think I, he's seeing the future all the time. Yeah. And then the future it's up to as him currently to, written. Right. Right. And then it's up to him to change it. So I guess that farmer just looks like a undead zombie once his farm folds yeah. up. Uh, I was kind of scared by that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then. I guess it's okay because I don't remember if he actually looks at the farmer again and is just like, oh, okay, everything will be okay now that I loaned him this money. I don't think he gets that confirmation. Yeah, that's funny because yeah. I mean, maybe even the writers were like, well, you know, this isn't going to go anywhere, right? It's, right. <laughs> it's just him performing a good deed. I mean, we're I guess we're just being led to assume that because he lend him lends him the money, everything turns out okay in the end. Sure, sure. like most. Since government subsidized farms in the <laughs> mid to late eighties, exactly that they were totally not just gonna buy up the land anyways and run the highway through it because right. that's the way it goes. And yeah. pay him not to farm, pay him not to grow right. crops. Yeah, right. it's a very weird episode because if you think about the reality of what's going on, even with the glasses on, he makes some boneheaded decisions that don't make any sense that do not serve his character positively. Uh -huh. There's the one moment where that woman is counting the money and she drops a 20 into the trash and he, right. he's staring and staring and staring. And then she's like, oh, I dropped a 20. Like, what was supernatural about that? I mean, I don't even know what was going on. Like, we should have just said, like, hey, you dropped a 20. Right. Well, he sees her do it. That's the first time he puts on the glasses. Sees her right. do it. Goes over, hey, you dropped this money. He looks in the garbage can. It's not there. It's just like, oh, okay. After he freaked her out, mm. like he could have just come over and been like, oh, I guess it's not there. But instead, it's like, you dropped money in there. It's like, <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. 20 and, bucks. Careful. Yeah. And then he leaves, takes off the glasses, and then it actually happens. Right. And so we, it's kind of what we talked about last month, we as the audience, have figured out, oh, his glasses allow him to see in the future. Right. Shouldn't take four more times for that to happen for him to figure it out. It's like, come on, buddy, let's pick up the slack pretty quickly. Or this season, they seem very concerned with convincing our protagonists of the powers that are in play. Yeah. You with know what? I 22 minutes to do it. I'm almost missing those episodes where it's like, what really happens when you get a wish from a yard sale? Like I, I remember yeah, right. that was a shit episode, but it's like, I'm missing those things now. I'm missing like the, the curiosity shop that you go into because you hate Asian people, like whatever those <laughs> things were, you know? Oh, is that Wong's old fashioned that, emporium? Yeah. yeah. 
God damn. Those episodes played fast and loose with their rules, but man, they were dumb. And like yeah. dumb and kind of like looking at them now, it's like they were dumb in a fun way. This is just like dumb in a very boring way. Yeah. And as fast and loose as they're playing with their rules, like everyone was on board. Like, you know, we didn't need to spend any time going like, oh, well, I don't understand. I'm in this emporium. What? I need confirmation. Let me go back out and come back in and tell somebody that will think I'm crazy. Like, who cares? Get on with it. Exactly. And especially given the fact that we are now at a 22 minute runtime. And they spent how long showing him do this over and over and over again? Like, oh, my God. It's at least half the runtime before everything starts sort of uh, coming into Uh focus. And I don't know if you guys know this, but if you fall off of a ladder back bump, you break your neck. Oh, my God. That ladder is so dangerous. She's got to be at least three feet off the ground. (laughs) Falling flat on her back and breaking her neck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's instant, instant death. Yeah, <laughs> definitely doesn't need to be anything that would cause her neck to snap. Just hitting the ground hard enough snaps your neck. That's oh. why I will only live in a ranch home. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird. Yeah, because he saves her life and then he doesn't need her. He doesn't even get, get anything. No, they he, don't he, even he, date. Like, no, yeah, he loans out the money. Once and now again, he's broke. The, like the authors are are expecting us to fill in all the fucking gaps and it that's actually their job nobody they paid gave us, us to a do tile it. floor uh-huh. and we just have to grout in it it's yeah. our job to make it look good sure. they gave us the basic building blocks to get there <laughs> yeah. that's basic not is how right. this works at all <laughs> here's some rock salt and some cream now make go <laughs> make ice cream yeah. yeah yeah don't you love ice cream don't you love making it yourself like no that's not the point of this <laughs> Do it's, you like Angelina Jolie? <laughs> it's, I think for me with this show, and look, we're what in the we're in kind of the the home stretch here. We're about halfway through the third season. You know that that means that we're like going somewhere good, like that. <laughs> right. If what if if Tales from the Crypt is any indicator, yeah. The longer the show goes on, the better the episodes get. Like certainly, mm. that's true of every show. Yeah. Remember the end of Dexter? God, I do. So good. Yeah. So good that they're literally redoing the show. Mm. Uh, Yeah. It's man. (sighs) It's depressing, right? Yeah. I think it's, is it? Okay. The question is, is it depressing on its own or is it depressing knowing how far we've fallen with this show? Um, A little bit of knowing how far it's fallen, because if I had to, if this had been the first season of the new Twilight Zone, I would have gotten not as far as we are now Mm. and, and not revisited it. Until right. somebody went, oh, they did a really fucking good one last night. Like that, that's what it would have taken. Whereas watching from season one here, it's like, holy shit, like that one kind of was not good. But I remember just two episodes ago that scared the shit out of me. Like, like I'm going to definitely keep tuning in. This is right. just so it, there just doesn't seem to be any bite to it, I, I, which makes me sound like I'm, you know, I want the sort of bitter, angry Twilight Zone. And that's not the case. Like, I like the sort of more gentle episodes, but it has to have something going on. Like this has nothing other than what's going on in the world today. Let's make a comment on that. Does that almost make this more similar to the Jordan Peele Twilight Zone than we realize? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the the Jordan Peele Twilight Zone, in my opinion, fails because it's too topical for its own good. Like a child president in the vein of Trump. Isn't that weird? Like, yes, but... 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, when people are watching it on their CRT TV and the uh, apocalyptic wasteland, are they really going to care? Like, you know, like that's the the question that I have is like, is this still a a message, a message that everyone can understand, which those original show episodes, even episodes in this season or this, this series, this, this new series, they still have some sticking power because they're not hyper topical. Well, you know what? Like, uh, uh, wordplay was very topical at the yeah. time and and it picked a topic that was so uh relatable that it is as relevant now as it was then whereas like you go back to the original twilight and there was an episode with fritz weaver which is sort of this like uh this takedown of of hitler i'm like 40 years on you guys are taking down hitler like it's not topical we know you all went through it but it's even like it's unwatchable now like other than i love fritz weaver and we'll watch him um, so, you know, unless you have something to relate what's going on, like 
in the zeitgeist to a greater sense of things like the past and possibly the future, like don't bother. And, and certainly don't bother if you don't have a fucking story to tell, because that's what it seems to be more often than not. It's just like there's this savings and loan kind of situation going on or, you know, the women are being abused. Like, you know, we got to make a comment on that. Like what? Am I wrong? Was the was the George R. R. Martin? Was that this season? The Toys of Caliban? Was that this season? Uh, yes. Yeah, it well, was like was, right at the beginning. Oh, no, right? that was that was halfway through last season. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I was going to say, like that one was, you know, that that's pretty good. If that was in this season, I can't really discount the season overall, but I guess yeah. not. Now this one, this season started with a J. Michael Straczynski episode, and it started with that one uh, about Harry Morgan collecting all the junk in the room. Oh, right. I mean, and that's kind of set the tone. Yeah, it kind of set the tone for the whole thing. The next one was the baseball one. Another quaint little episode. Yeah. You remember the baseball one, Father Malone? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It's it's all sort of no teeth season of mm-hmm. twilight zone like the barest of plots and the barest of supernatural intervention is it yeah. this isn't the twilight zone at all it's like some like retirement home from the twilight zone where all the food is pre-chewed <laughs> <laughs> go we don't want you anymore harry and henderson style so let's move on to the next episode there was an old woman oh, must we we have to Not so very long ago, before computerized toys and cathode raid characters did our speaking and thinking for us, one of a storyteller's most important tools was imagination. The imagination of an audience. That was how it used to be, once upon a time. There Was an Old Woman aired December 17th, 1988. It is directed by Otta Hainis. Hannes, I assume probably Otta Hannes, written by Tom J. Astle, and it stars Colleen Dewhurst as a old woman who writes children's books, but she's disillusioned with all those darn kids and their darn VHSs. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Boy. And that's it. Good night, folks. Like, I mean, that's the whole message of the episode is like, don't fight technology because there's still place in the world for books. And ghost children. Yeah. Who like books, not movies. Yeah, because they died before the video revolution. This reminds me of an old Twilight Zone. Just the feel of it. It kind of reminds me of the Kick the Can episode, like that oh, yeah. type of whimsy, which I that was a remake of an old story, right? That they used in the movie and the movie version was just so saccharine i think i contacted diabetes from watching it we all did thank you spielberg oh that was bad i love old people and i love kids i'll do this episode please don't yeah (laughs) i didn't mind this one but that's pretty much all i can say about it like i thought the acting was very good uh especially our main character i thought it was really kind of a shocker when she finds the book that she had dedicated or, or uh, inscribed to the dying child. And when she finds it and she calls up the parents, like, what the fuck, man, I gave you this book <laughs> only to hear that he hey, had died. Yeah. <laughs> Our kid died today. We're just coming back from his funeral. It's like, Oh, Jesus. fuck. But you know what? Like uh, whatever attempt at like pulling heartstrings, like that's like a, f- fucking total failure like as saccharine as like the spielberg kick the can one was like i felt some emotion with those people and and you know their younger selves like uh-huh. here i don't feel anything for anybody like it, it's just sort of endemic of the this season where they won't take a point of view like if you want to make me cry then fucking go for it like even if you fail like and i see through it like i at least know your intent here i don't know i, I honestly don't know what they were trying to say no ghost children like books <laughs> yeah. i don't know like what what is there to internalize in the message from the end of this episode oh, i'm gonna have to move away uh, these things are, you know i just can't deal with this modern world and then that yeah that, that, that yuppie Those couple yuppies that come in. Oh my yes. God, i wanted to dope slap them like and th- <laughs> we they don't get, like they, kids ugh, no comeuppance for them oh yeah <sighs> 
that's just I, I just you know I I don't know. It's not that people love in this show anymore. Nothing it's, happens no, in this uh, episode. Uh, uh, Nothing has happened in like the last five or six episodes. Good lord! It's like that fucking remember that uh, that opera one, the fucking Peter Mead act. Oh god! It's like an entire season. Our Selena is dying. Yes. Where, where we, we there's just no nothing. There's no stakes. There's no drama. It's just here's an idea I have. This season I, feels like walking out to Old Yeller's barn to shoot him. This uh-huh. whole season is us walking out to the barn to shoot old Yeller. It Which made like, me cry you know, because that was their intent and they fucking achieved it. Yeah. That's what this feels like. Like an old rabid dog that's still screaming out in the shed. And you're just like, be quiet out there. And then you have to go shoot it because it's just like at, they shot this show. I mean, they essentially have already canceled this show. We're having to deal with the way that they canceled this show uh-huh. and still offloaded the episodes as it is. So it's just like this old rabid dog just like growling we need another 20 episodes what do you got well we have all of these rejections right here like that'll do Mm -hmm. man (sighs) i know i mean i guess it was kind of inevitable yeah like no none of us well no like that show like we were gonna get to a point where like i don't do any of us like i know i'd never seen this show before do you guys remember having seen these episodes or is this all new territory yeah, this is actually new territory for me. I, I thought I had seen the entire run of the show, but I think I got through season two, most of it, because there were some episodes that I hadn't seen uh, in their initial run then. Right. Um, but I, I, my knowledge of the season is woefully deficient. I don't think I've seen one of these. And uh, I, 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 I feel no guilt in not having seen them at the time because uh, it, I think it would have tarnished my opinion. I, no, at the, that first season is so fucking good. I can't, uh-huh. uh, n- nothing can take a, take that away, but this season's it, it's bad, right? I mean, it's, and it's not even bad in a insulting way. It's just sort of blah, like, uh-huh. you know, it's like a, mm. yeah, I think the last episode I remember seeing, in the original run was probably the one that had joy ride shelter skelter and mm. private channel which ironically had a kid dropping a walkman and then able to hear people's thoughts yeah yeah and that was oh. good yeah well better than better than this better than 2020 this. but yeah and better than this this old lady who lived in a shoe i mean <laughs> like i said i liked her and i liked her performance but yeah then it just made me mad yeah the yuppie couple made me yeah. angry and then and in the fucking real estate agent who starts upbraiding her i thought yeah turn it go you know you work for me right exactly yeah like something that she needed to take a stand somewhere around here she just doesn't she just goes to visit a sick kid and then that kid dies and then she's got ghost children like there's no rhyme or reason to any of this and she doesn't seem to be scared at all by those ghost children completely no. nonplussed she's so happy to finally have an audience because you couldn't find an audience for children to read books to in 1988 it was all over and it continues to this day like what I, what it, it doesn't even make sense like kids right. are still reading and also like you're gonna tell me that she couldn't just like go on like public access and read these stories like a Mr. Rogers type thing, which was so big in the eighties. Yeah. Like she's a famed author. We're led to believe yeah. right? like of children's books, like, like a, like an RL Stein or shell Silverstein or something like, uh-huh. right. No, now she's going to be a shut in, in her house reading to ghost children. What? That doesn't seem like a positive outcome here. It's the best we can all hope for. Uh-huh. <laughs> So are we led to believe by the end that she is done writing, but will only read to ghost children now? That one book. Yeah, just the one book over and over again for the rest of her life. Oh, my God. It was she in hell. Because then I like this. stuff. <laughs> I mean, again, that I don't the way that they tell this story is very strange because it would seem like punishment at the end. Yeah, like that's the way I cool. interpret it. Like you're stuck. She's like, I'm going to be useful now and read Do those kids go to sleep children. after the story. Do they just right. keep wanting her to read it again? <laughs> read, read it again. again. Read oh it my again. God. I love the idea of that episode. Where there's was only, that? There's yeah. only one way out. <laughs> she pulls that's out a Harlan gun Ellison. and shoots yeah. herself. Like no one has been cursed to hell in the last few episodes. It's like, come on, give me something, something like, you know, and, th- and that was the thing. Like sometimes 
things happen to you in the twilight zone and they just don't there's no rhyme or reason to it you were a good person and you had a bad day and now you're in hell like we can deal with that in fact yeah. i kind of crave that from this show yeah, yeah. i mean you, you just made a of- left turn and you ended up in a cursed village or you ended up literally on the road to hell <laughs> <laughs> or you Come invited on. or you invited the devil over to your house to play cards. Like, why did the devil show up? Please yeah. tell me why. Oh, wait, they never mention why. And you know what? I don't fucking care that they Didn't don't mention care. because the yeah. episode is so fucking good. Right. Yeah. Like, or, why did the, you know, or the, or he just shows up because you're trying to solve a math problem. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Like, there you go. Like, Makes I makes sense to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't question it. It's the twilight. Like, it's the twilight zone. Don't tell me why things are in the Twilight Zone. It's the Twilight Zone. Uh-huh. You don't have to. We already yeah. assume weird things are going to happen. I'm not tuning into this show because it's Desperate Housewives. I'm tuning into the show because I want to see flights of fancy or flights of terror or somewhere in between. That episode with the kid on the plane with the Walkman, he drops the Walkman into the, the sink and the, the plane gets hit by lightning. They give us that reason. I remember thinking, I don't need that. He could have just been sitting in his chair and suddenly he hears a guy's thoughts. And we would have been like, oh, shit, Twilight Zone. I mean, that's literally what happened in the Jordan Peele one. He just starts yeah. listening to that episode yeah. and they don't explain it. Like, it's just to, OK. Yeah. I mean, that episode is still kind of a bummer in a lot of ways because it kind of squanders a great idea. But at least it gets it doesn't have to do lantern hanging. Like, come on. It's just so fucking lazy. Uh-huh. And now we have a 22 minute show that abuses the fact that it's 22 minutes long by not doing anything anyways. Yeah. And how insulting it is, it, is it that, you know, in that first season, we would get these interstitial episodes that lasted maybe seven minutes and they knocked it out of the park. And now you've given 22 and you don't do anything at all. Like you don't even deliver it like a decent character piece. Like we're just given the broadest brushstrokes of who these people are and why they are the way they are. And now here's a resolution for them. Yeah, it, it this this similarly to Tales from the Crypt, it's it hurts a lot to watch this show because I know how good it was. Yeah. Yeah. But th- those were actively bad and insulting. That's, that's, These are just kind of there, which is uh-huh. in a way worse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those. Yeah. Those end Tales from the Crypt episodes were a slog, but yeah. a real. These are just kind of like, what are they going to trot out now? Here's a pleasant little tale of nothing. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Like, I can't be mad at it. It's not like, you know, they were, you know, insulting me in any way. But at the same time, like, what are we doing, J. Michael? Yeah. <laughs> All the roads lead through J. Michael Straczynski as the story editor. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can get him an, an interview now with all the praise we're heaping on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. That'll well. go over well. <laughs> So on the next episode of Dreams for Sale, we'll be taking a look at the 14th and 15th episodes of the third season, The Trunk, which stars Bud Court, and Ooh. Appointment on Route 17, which stars Paul Lamat. Oh, I like him too. Yeah. Those are going to be good. <laughs> Famous <laughs> last words. <laughs> yeah. And, and none of us know if they will or won't be, which is fun. Yeah. Here's, here's hoping. Right? Yeah, here's hoping. So I until then, Father Malone, where could people find you if they were looking? If you're looking for Father Malone, go to fathermalone.com. You can check out my show, Dark Destinations. That is a half hour radio drama that takes listeners to uh, otherworldly and uh, supernatural towns. Um, you can also check out my YouTube channel. You can link that uh, also links off of fathermalone.com. I've got that kind of a review show and weirdo little animations I make these days. Um, <laughs> They're so great, check, by the way. Check me out over there. Oh, have a cool, dude. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, that one's <laughs> that, one, that one's increasing in popularity. I've noticed over the past month or so, I've gotten like 500 new views. So it's like somebody sees it and shares it. I guess so. Gabagool, <laughs> dude. It's a thing. Yeah. You were ahead of the Gabagool train. I was. <laughs> well, maybe it's that uh, that that fucking Newark movie is coming out. Like, oh yeah, are, like right. searching for Sopranos now. They want Gabagool, which is delicious. I mean, yeah. What about you, Mike? Where where can people find you? You can always find me over at projectionboothpodcast.com. I'm sorry, I don't have a cool little, you know, personal URL. I've got mikewhitesite.com, but um, I don't have anything up there. I've got just garbage I worked on years ago. So is that Mike White Site or Mike White Psych? No, Site. Site. Yeah. Not Psych, though. That'd probably be good, though. Mike and then White you get psych. there and it's just nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you psych. have to type out psych. Wait, yeah. how do you spell it? Psych is it with the E without with the P? No. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. Shit, you fucker. 
S I K E. What the? <laughs> what kind of animal are you? <laughs> and how about you, Chris? As for me, c stashu dot com. C S T A C H I W dot com. It's unfortunately hard to spell because it's my fucking last name. So there you go. That's where all the stuff that I work on is on. <laughs> Culture Cast, Chronicles from the Crypt, Rankin on Bass, Barney Miller, Scary Stories We Tell. There's a lot. But you can find it all at cstashu.com. As for this podcast, TwilightZone85.com or TwilightZone85 on Twitter or on Facebook, TwilightZone85. And on iTunes and Google. All those places you can find this show. Big thanks as always to Roxy Drive at Neutron Dreams for the music for the show. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.